Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Jason Magruder here with JMX Stats MMA, and I'm here with Eric Nick Sick. Uh, he's been coaching a lot of great fighters that's been in the UFC. Big news with Francis Ngannou, and also, how are you doing, Eric Nick Sick? I'm good, man. I'm I'm busy, but it's good. You know, good to be busy. So, be, staying blessed, right? Yes, sir. So, the biggest news there is right now: Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm proud of him. You know, it's, this is uh, this is one of his main goals. Um, even back when I first met him, something he's always wanted to do was box and to get in there and 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 test himself against the best to ever do it. And um, you know, I'm just happy for him, man. Everything came to fruition, so you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't be happy for the guy. So is he going to be like active, like in like a training camp with you most of the time, or with like other people? Uh, I don't know that yet. We're gonna we're gonna sit down uh, Friday. We got dinner with the team. Uh, myself, Dewey, Markel, Francis, um, Randy. We'll sit down and we'll, we'll go over everything and and discuss kind of what our schedules look like, where we're gonna be. I mean, you know, obviously we all have um, our stable of fighters as well, you know. But uh, th this this takes precedence, um, so it's gonna really matter on what Francis wants and what he needs and, and our availability as well. So um, a lot of these these questions I don't really need to know the answer to yet, but uh, we'll, we'll get that all figured out Friday. Absolutely, and with with everything that. Um like there's been like some controversy and everything with like the pay and everything. Um, like what, what is like your thoughts been on that? Like, especially with like a lot of his opinions have been like floating out around considering he's been, he's now moved to the PFL, but he hasn't had a PFL fight yet. Do you prefer him more in the PFL or UFC or does it, you have no preference? Zero preference. I mean, competition wise, I, I prefer the UFC because right. you know, I think the, the best talent is going to be in the UFC, but Absolutely. Um, again, the, like this is, this, this has nothing to do with, with me or my preference, um, you know, competition wise. Yeah. I mean, the John Jones of the world, the Sergey Pavlich's, you know, there's, there's guys still even that steep a fight, you know, get, getting the, the, the trilogy. There's a lot of great fights, um, talent and competition wise. I think you're going to be in the UFC, but, um, you know, Francis maximizing his potential and, 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 uh, and, and star power and, you know, earning power, He's striking while the iron's hot, and he's taking advantage of that right now while he's in his prime. Okay, and um, with Dana White, he was saying whenever he was in an interview, of, uh, I think a month or two ago, he was like, so someone, I think it was the Mac Life that was asking him, will Francis Ngannou ever be back in the UFC? And he's like, I usually say never, like never say never, but this is something I will say that will never happen again. Like, do, you, do you agree with him? Uh, you know, it's his promotion. So if, if the, he feels that way and he doesn't want to back in there, you know, that's that's completely up to him. But um, I think Dana is a very smart businessman. Um, I think he also wears his emotions on his sleeve. So maybe in that part of where he's at in the relationship with Francis, is that's how he felt. But I think time heals all. Um, if there's a position or an opportunity to make that John Jones fight, I think that's the fight all parties do want. Um, especially now that Francis is going out and, you know, obviously we have the, the Tyson Fury fight signed. We haven't competed yet. We haven't fought yet, but once that, that, that hurdles crossed over, then I think it opens up a lot of other things for Francis in, in, in his future, you know? So, um, I'm, I'm a never say never guy. And I think I'm just an optimistic dude by nature. So, um, but I, I think that, you know, that door is never going to be closed. I mean, yeah, that's good that at least there's like one one side that agrees with that because I really do want to see him back in the UFC. There's a lot of good fights for him to make, and considering heavyweight is one of the best pay-per-view selling divisions, most exciting divisions yet. So that's why it's good that he's going to be at least for the, um, the PFL for a while, now board of the African, um, the Africa part of the side of the organization. And that's a really, really big deal. And now that he's going to be going to boxing, it's going to make his name even larger, win or lose against Tyson Fury. And do you know with, with um I'm not for sure yet, I hear it's under boxing rules for that fight, but is it an exhibition or is it actually going to be a pro fight for any any of the six belts? No, I don't know that yet either. Yeah. I haven't heard. Yeah, it's um, been, it's I, I he called me last night. He just got back home. So he just called me last night. I was like 10 o'clock. He was out eating a steak at Barry's Steakhouse. And he's like, hey, come get come come have a steak. I'm like, bro, it's 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'm already like getting ready for bed. Yeah. You know, so he he had just got home and um he just actually just just texted me right before I got on with you. So um, you know, a lot of this is I mean, I knew about the fight, I knew about the announcement. Um, but I dude, like I'm I'm so busy, like I didn't even ask, you know, I don't yeah. even know either shit. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's that's the nice thing is we'll sit down, we'll sit down on uh on Friday and get a lot of this cleared up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it, it was only announced. I haven't even seen like 
I don't. I think it's how it's probably under like top rank or something. It's usually what Tyson Fury is under, and with yep. ESPN pay per view. But uh, it was only ESPN ringside that posted about it. There wasn't even like a full like actual poster. But it it was com- it's confirmed for sure. But there, like there's not. A, like, I think the rules and whatever is going to be on the line is really what the issue is. There's no information on that yet. I saw Tyson Fury like just his casual Instagram stories that he always like rants or something about anybody. He's like, Francis and God, I'm going to knock you out, you dosser and everything. So he hasn't said anything about any kind of rules or anything. He's only been talking about contracts with so many different fighters that have fallen through. So yeah. And he's, he's still, he's still like, and God who's uh, mainly at your gym, right? With like Sean Strickland and Chris Curtis and all those guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Francis is full time, full time guy here. So, um, you know he's uh he he wreaks havoc around these <laughs> these parts. So he's our he's our guy, man. And um you know I'm just excited to get him back in the room and, and get him back into you know doing anything. You know boxing, mixed mm-hmm. martial arts, whatever it may be. But um our room is much better when Francis is in it. Absolutely, yeah, I understand that for sure. And with with Sean Strickland, he's he's had some big moments too. Um, you went over Abu uh, Magomedov and how like was like what you saw in that like any like. Was there anything different you wanted to see? I know he has like that same kind of style. Like he's always been sparring that same way. He has nothing to leak or like expose himself with. Um, it's just been the same thing. It's been very successful on a lot of people other than Peta, which was a while ago. But he's been doing well and he's been getting in so many fights as many as he uh, as as many as he can. So, do you think there's anything that could change with him to be able to get hi- higher and higher up into the division? Yeah, I think so. I think you can always better your best, and you know he has a particular style and. The key is not to necessarily take him away from the style that has made him so great, but right. add some tools and add some things to his game that can can that can help him out, you know. And um, I think there's some areas that I think Izzy is going to look to exploit if if and when we ever get that opportunity to fight Izzy, and we have to shore those holes up, you know. But we also have to utilize our our best attributes and our best tools to be able to compete against a guy like Israel, you know. So you don't want to you don't want to change too much, but at the same time, there are little things that I think we can add on and be better at. Um, but I'm just super proud of like the fact of he's understanding more of the fight IQ, the situational awareness things and listen, listening to the a game plan, um, not just going out there and just making a, a brawl, which a lot of times I think that's what we see from the exterior, but mm-hmm. there's things that we're trying to uh, um, implement it and do in a fight. And then he's able to kind of see what the openings are um, from us as coaches. And then, you know, uh, he's got to maintain his creative control while he's in there, but all the while, you know, he's been sticking to a good game plan. Yeah, and that's it's word for word. It's good. Um, then that week, he uh, the Rogan podcast came out, and there was a lot of things he like came into detail with, and a lot of like personal things, and just like so many things that like a lot of people never knew about because he's always like smiling and he's like he's always like he's always joking around and stuff. And then everything yeah. everything he was going through with with all of those super deep topics and things he's laughing through and everything like that and he's like that's he's saying fighting really helped him out with these things do you see any of that like did like his personal relationship with other people now that like he's exposed himself like that he knows a little bit about it like do you think he's helpful with like personal relationships with people and things like that in your gym he's always been helpful and he's always been a, a really good teammate and i think that you know part of him uh, a lot of times doesn't want to admit to the fact that he's a, that he's a good teammate, but by nature, he, he does have a big heart and I, and he, dude, he's a very important figure in this gym as mu- a, a lot as amongst a lot of these guys in this room. But Sean has a different type of history and a different type of path mm-hmm. um, that I think a lot of people don't really understand, but I, I'm glad he did the Rogan podcast. Cause there was a few friends of mine or colleagues, um, you know, within the MMA space that aren't really the fondest of Sean, but, I think that podcast opened their eyes to a lot of their history. I think it it answered a lot of questions on the way he is. And I I was glad he did it. You know, I think it was important to tell a story a little bit more and to go into a little bit in depth of, you know, his upbringing and and the things that maybe have, have formed him into the guy that he is today. But, you know, with that being said, man, like my job as a coach is to, to try to, you know, better my athletes, not only in the cage, but as human beings, and I am proud to say, like, you know, he is a he is a good teammate in the room. It, it might not come off like that to some on the exterior. Right. And a lot of people will never understand that. Right. Like a lot of people from the exterior want to try to di- dissect and diagnose what goes on in a in a day in our room. And they only see like five minutes of a, of a clip. He doesn't mm-hmm. do himself a lot of favors either. Yeah, no. But 
you know, but, but I'm telling you, man, like from the, from, from my perspective, a guy who runs this gym and, you know, has been here for 15 years, he's a throwback, you know, he's an yeah. old school guy and he gets in your face and yells at you and calls you a fucking pussy and says you're a bitch <laughs> and this, this and that. But he's saying it out of a place of love that sure. I don't think a lot of people really get. Like, I think I, I re- relate to him a lot more because my uncle was the same way with me. He was very tough. Uh, he's a lineback- our linebackers coach and our strength and conditioning coach. And he was very tough on me in a lot of ways. And it wasn't until I got out of football or got out from coach being coached underneath him that I realized like his passion was because he cared so much and he didn't want to see you fail. And I, I think I relate a lot to that sh- to Sean is that man, like he gets in your face and yells at you because he actually cares, but the guys he doesn't yell at and the guys he doesn't get in their face, he doesn't give a shit about. So, you know, he's, he actually cares. And that's, that's, uh, that's important. I think to have a guy like that, you know, really give a shit about his teammates. Yeah, for sure. Cause like whenever you're in an actual, like everybody's goal is to be good, like with MMA and everything, and especially in gyms like yours and whenever I, I'll be in like a gym with like a ton of teenagers like me, like I'm only 18 years old and the whole time it's like, it's half the time. It's not even like a respect thing. It's just like, it's everyone's ego against the, like the other person. And whenever you're in gyms like that, no matter how the way they act in front of other people, it really is a sign of like respect and things like that. No matter what they say, I've seen so many sparring videos with him and other people and like the yelling and stuff just makes it a better vibe. And it, it all in all just makes it a better place to be. Yeah, I think when you really understand who and what Sean Strickland is, you know, you, you kind of understand, uh, I wouldn't say like how to tame him, but you just know, you just know where he's coming from, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what I love about him, dude. Like we, we, there's never been a a conversation where like, you know, there's been times of I've had to come to him and, and say something to him and not like, you know, you need to change your ways, but I, I, I know how to approach Sean. I know how to talk to Sean and he's yeah. always been very responsive to constructive cur- criticism. Hey, Sean, I think you can say this a little bit different. And I think you'd win more hearts by, you know, like there'll be, there were, one day there was a technique we were doing in wrestling and he was just smashing everybody with this particular technique. And right. after the practice, he was like, you know, you guys all fucking suck. Let me show you guys how <laughs> I was kicking your ass. You know, and he was right. He was right. That's what was happening. But, you know, in a room full of alpha males, it's just not really the approach, you know. And, and I said to Sean, because a lot of the guys were very dismissive of him. And Sean just comes over to me. He's like, man, I'm just trying to help these guys. They don't want to listen. I was like, no, what you're saying was right. But the way you're saying it was wrong. I said, well, how about this approach? Hey, man, you guys had an awesome practice. You guys did great, yada, yada, yada. Um, here's this one position I kept getting on you guys. Let's let's through that so we don't, you know, you guys can get better in this particular spot. He's like, yeah, you're right. I got to work on my delivery, you know. And I, I think he understands that because mm-hmm. he does want to be accepted by the team. And he does want to be a part of the family. And he has earned that right here now. And he is one of those team captains of the room. And you know, I'm just really proud of him. He, he, he won't admit it that he's a captain, but you know, I'll tell him, you know, Hey bro, he'll be a guy jumping on the mat, hooting and hollering and making sure everybody's on time and they have their tape and they're all prepared. So it's definitely been a, a, a big 180 from him since he's first been in extreme couture. Yeah. Yeah. So one more, one more thing before I let you go um, with the middleweight, like with Rob, like after the Rob Whitaker versus uh, Drikas Duplessis fight, the people expected Whitaker, right? The, the odds really favored him and things like that. And then places uh, caught him with a very good jab and then was able to get, finish off with a TKO. If Whitaker won, what do you think would happen? Because whenever that happened, Sean Strickland was saying on his Instagram and social medias and things like that, I guess we have to keep waiting. So was there an actual discussion for like the title if Rob actually won? Um, yeah, I mean, part of the reason why we took the abuse fight was it did come with a guaranteed title shot. Now oh, wow. it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, you know, the, the guarantees are just, just that. I mean, they doesn't really matter. And right. Sean might be guaranteed a title fight if he sits back and waits, but mm-hmm. knowing Sean and his history, he just likes to fight. Exactly. So, um, we need to really sit down and kind of weigh out our options. And I need to kind of talk to Mick about what is next for Sean. Um, you know, do we hold that, title fight guarantee up to the to the fire with these guys or you know sean gets the opportunity to fight a guy like robert whitaker or somebody else and maybe we take that opportunity but um you know there's still a lot that can happen with this within now and um you know the september fight if that's when they're going to try to book izzy i know izzy will be ready but i still question and wonder if Drikus will be ready and uh you know for sean guys do get injured guys do get hurt let's say Drikus does get injured in a, in a fight, 
Sean needs to have his mindset ready to go and, and keep his weight down because he might be that short notice plug in at the mm-hmm. opportunity to fighting for a belt. So there's a lot of things that come into play with the, with the middleweight division. And, um, you know, I was equally surprised as most to see Drakus win that fight. Um, I mean, good on him. I think he, he took advantage of his opportunity and, and maximize it right in that moment, man. I, I was blown away to be honest with you. So, yeah. um, but credit to him, man, he, he's earned this, he earned his title shot. Now it's up to us to figure out what, what's next. All right. Good luck with that. Eric Nixick, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for this interview. This is one of my first ever. Um, where JMAX Stats MMA is really happy to have you as one of the very first people I've interviewed. So thank you so much. My pleasure, man. Thanks for asking. Happy to help out.